Hello, Brad here. Just to say we're super proud that the Friday 5pm podcast is sponsored by the Malt Miller, the UK's best home brew store. We use the Malt Miller for all of our homebrew experiments, as well as tapping them up for advice and binging on their awesome YouTube channel all the time. That's why whenever we release a homebrew video, we put a recipe kit live on the Malt Miller, so you can brew with the exact same amazing ingredients that we did. The same ingredients used by pro brewers. So alongside the Malt Miller's nitro flushed hops, cold stored yeast and milled to order malts, you can pick up recipe kits for our Five Points Best Bitter, Russian River West Coast IPA and now the fastest beer in the world, a hazy session IPA that goes from grain to glass in less than 48 hours. Sign up to their newsletter at tinyurl.com forward slash Malt Miller to get 5% off your first order. With the Malt Miller's amazing customer service and Johnny's 48 hour recipe, You could order the ingredients on a Monday and be drinking the beer by the weekend. Speaking of which, it's Friday. It's 5pm. So enjoy this week's Friday 5pm podcast. It's Thursday, it's 5pm and because of the Easter weekend, that means it's Friday. Um... That's about as eloquent as I'm going to be this morning because I got to bed at 1am. When did you manage it, Brad? I think I was maybe slightly earlier than you. I didn't have to travel quite as far. Um, but yeah, yeah it was you didn't have to get to the wilds of Hertfordshire. No, no, it was pretty late. I stayed till they turned the lights on. So um, right till the bitter end. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was great, man. It was great getting the. Yeah, you were. You, I, I was just running for my train, and you just got yourself a fresh little crispy pilsner. You, yeah, I stopped with the West Coast vibes. I totally West Coasted myself out by that point um, <laughs> because it is they're big, they're big drinks to drink. They, are, I mean, I do think they are really crushable as a session style. Um, if you're someone who's been drinking a lot of Nipahs and and such, come into that. I think probably is a bit of a like rude awakening or whatever. I had I can't remember who I was talking to. Someone I was talking to yesterday said. All these West Coast taste exactly the same. Uh, I reckon that was your man Rasco. Oh yeah, because he be, said yeah. that to me. Okay, yeah. what did you? What did you make of that? I don't think that's accurate. I don't think they all taste the same. But well, I, um, I I gave I gave him an interview, which I think will be going live on on his channel about how that was oh, okay. um, not n- no more true than it is true for New England IPAs. Um, but exactly. I think there's a greater variety of hops being used in in um, West Coast. Um, yes, than, yes, than yes. in New England. Um, but yeah, I thought I thought the beers. So it's sorry to anybody that didn't realise. Uh, last night we did an event at the Beer Merchants Tap, um, which is in in West uh, West London. No, very much not. Nothing's in West London. East London, um, in which we put on ten taps of amazing West Coast beer in a bid to get everybody excited about bitter IPAs again. Um, and the average ABV was a little bit scary, but uh, that's why I mostly drank Bitter Lake all night, which A is from my favourite West Coast brewery in Burnt Mill. And B is a five and a half percent pale ale that was absolutely banging. It was banging. I think I had a, I think I had a half of that, not a pint. I had a half of that, but um, mm. a bought, bought for me by some of our lovely patreons as well. Oh, um, there you go. Who I'd also <clears throat> previously had a wild night out with the pair of them at a um, <clears throat> at a, a Czech tasting in Pivo a couple of months ago. Uh, to I the, remember. I to remember the, the hangover. To the, I think well, we to recorded the, that day. I think we might have done to the point where I don't really even remember much of the evening. I've got sort of flashbacks to eating very fancy goulash uh, downstairs <laughs> in Pivo at one point. I think um, Radley might have been trying to sober me up or something. Uh, but yeah, so the, the same. Oh, I mean, man, wasn't it great to get all the Patreons down? Well, not all of them, but a lot of people putting a lot of no, the- faces to names. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, it was really lovely to meet lots of them for the first time, and a couple of them for the second or third time. So I really appreciate the people that came came out again. Yeah, um, I can't believe you're not sick of us, given that you you see us on Wednesdays, hear us on Fridays, and then you still come and see us in the flesh as well. So it was really lovely to uh, to meet you all and be able to share a beer and be able to sling you Brad's amazing new T-shirt. Right, it went down um, well, didn't which, it? What was what yeah. were the sales? We had like thirty odd T-shirt sales, wasn't it? T- t- Twenty six. Oh, I'm calling it 30, Johnny. 30 is a nice round Yeah, number. Yeah, we'll round it up. We'll round it up. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, so sold 26 of those, which is more than half the stock. Um, yeah. So I think, I think you know, it was always the plan with Craft Beer Channel before uh, the big P happened. Um, 
to do more events, to do stuff where we, a we can meet people, b we can you know take over places and and force a bit of what we're enthusiastic about onto some people, um, and indeed to sell sell some beautiful merch. So we've got our online store where you can buy stuff, um, but also we've we wanted to do sort of exclusive event merch. So this was the first time that we've done that. So uh, yeah, we've still got twenty four t shirts. Actually, no, because we gave some away, and then I've stolen two, and you're going to tie dye some, right? So yeah, pretty limited I've... lumbers left now. Yeah, it's definitely a waning stock, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm getting so many people online asking me, they're just DMing me on Instagram and uh, Patreon and whatnot saying, can I get one? Can I get one? Where can I get one? I can't come down. Can you make it? Can you ship it to New Zealand? Uh, <laughs> can it Can it come to America? You know, like, so I think we might have to look at an online solution, but... I have to do it online. We, we've got to learn from the craft brewery industry. We've got to yeah. learn that scarcity is key. I know. No, we, we. I hate that. I think we should. If, <laughs> if, if people want to, we should. We should find a way to get it out there. But we're not very happy with our current t-shirt supplier, so we're looking at a new one. So we'll sort that out, um, and then, then we we'll, maybe we'll put it online if Brad if Brad wants to. Yeah, I mean the the kind of reception this one's got is just blown me away compared to any of the other t-shirt designs I put out there. So I think yeah. I might have a bit of a spring clean of the um, store and take down T-shirts, which I don't think uh, I want to keep up. Essentially, I might bring them back in the future, but for now, I might limit the selection to make it much mm. more limited because sometimes you can have too much choice, Johnny. And also, you like, like you say, if there's not a sort of, um, not a rarity aspect, but if there's if you know it's always there, then you might not cop it. You keep telling yourself next week. <laughs> exactly. So I think I might <laughs> I might basically dismantle a lot of the store and just leave classic tees and maybe Budweiser tees. I like those. Uh, the, sorry, Budweiser. Yeah, not it's... not Budweiser. No association still, with Budweiser. We we still get endless <laughs> comments. Endless comments. We get like once uh, one every couple of weeks from somebody going like, "Why would I trust?" What uh, what somebody's saying when they're wearing a Budweiser T-shirt, and you sort of have to reply with, "Look, look at that, look at that hoodie a little bit closer, because that is definitely yeah. not a Budweiser hoodie." Should have gone well, to spec savers. That makes it a great design. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Can I just say uh, that you know that that T-shirt has gone down extremely well, and it's also it's an entirely unique design by you and i think yeah. that that's also powerful as well like we've done lots of sort of riffing on other brands and stuff like that and had some fun but i think everybody loves the the vibe you found there so we should we should run with it even if it's yeah, not yeah. this t-shirt well the the little hop dude character i've sort of you know i, I want him to become our mascot i've been saying for years that we need a little mascot you're gonna start to animating into our videos Oh, fucking hell i don't know maybe Put it on our shoulders <laughs> Oof, blimey uh that'd be that'd be great actually um but yeah so I, I think i quite like his sort of flag wavingness on the west coast t i could see that you know being a similar thing for different styles so that might drop mm. at some point maybe that'd when we cool. when we're at bigfoot maybe we'll come out with a a lager t-shirt for instance or something like that that yeah. features hop dude um and i'd love that so yeah I'll, i'm getting i'm getting my thinking cap on um awesome. i've always i'm always writing down ideas for t-shirts i've got a couple that i've come up with this week that are random and interesting but uh maybe not sort of so immediate as uh they're more specific than a man with a, a man a, a hop with a uh, a flag that says yeah. ipa is pretty exact exactly. you, you know where he's standing you know why right? he's marching He's yeah. literally standing on West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> on the word like, West Coast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, man, I, I thought West Coast Fest was excellent. And I'd love to do a big West Coast Fest. Like, you know, that was... I, first of all, fucking turnout last night was amazing. It was kind of blown yeah, away. Like that hundreds. For yeah, a, it was crazy. For a Wednesday night, that, you know, Beer Merchants Tap is huge. And it was it was fall to the rafters of people mm. consuming West Coast Fest, which, sorry, consuming West Coast beers, which made my heart warm. Uh, maybe that was a little bit of a uh, hot burn, I don't know. But um, <laughs> it, it, it really, it tickled me because this is a style which has been kind of put to the wayside a little bit. And it was so great to see people loving it. Um, I thought it was it was life-affirmingly good. 
uh, evening. Yeah, I agree. I I think I'd I'd love to do you know maybe 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 next year around sort of April May time, which is when the American hops have come over and all the IPAs will be tasting bang fresh and delicious with the new new hops. We could do a slightly larger scale and and grow it a little bit. And the the one thing I would say is like the reason you got West Coasted out and the reason I got West Coasted out is because it was all IPA and pale. And the original idea was we were going to have reds, browns, blacks um west coast pills like try and get as many different kind of west coast styles as we could and that proved incredibly difficult um we did have a brown ale but then there was a mix-up and that got sold out um we did have a red ale but um uh i think i think that one's on me i didn't manage to get the order in in time and all this kind of stuff so it was very hard to find but i think with enough warning we might be able to persuade some breweries to brew specially for it um and yeah. uh, and 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 put that together. And then what was also really lovely, like the little experiential stuff that I tacked on. So we had Yakima Chief doing hop rubbings um, of lots of new hops, uh, sorry, new harvest hops, um, and having Malt Miller there as well. So they were showing off their the Russian River kit that we did, um, and the Oregon Trail, the elusive Oregon Trail kit as well. They brought that along, and we gave that away to some Patreons at the end, and they were chatting about homebrew and about hops all evening, which was really nice as well to try and connect people to the ingredients that go, go into these beers. So I think there's, it's got, it's got legs. Um, yeah, it's got legs. Man. And I think, it, I think it speaks of us as well. And then maybe, you know, a different time of year we can, we can do, uh, we can do East coast fest and Oof. everyone can get sick of hazy stuff instead. Haze fest. Maybe it's haze fest. Haze fest. Something like that. Um, yeah. Who actually got, the kit in the end. I know it's down to Palmada. Hashtag, sorry, not hashtag. At Palmada from our Patreon was was one of the contenders. I'm not sure who who walked off with the the bag. I, of I don't actually know either. Um, I can mm. see in our Patreon forum that uh, Ian Williams walked away with the incognito and the uh, already oh, got some Chinook top note which is this uh, cool stuff that I've, I've never used where you so you you add it just before you package the beer and it is just the oils that give like the real top notes like the citrusy pithy kind of sharp flavors of hops and you can just add that extract right in it just gives you your beer a burst of flavor um so I might, I might experiment with that with my next next ipa whether it's a, a new england or a, a westie um so yeah i'm not quite sure who got the kit but whoever did i hope you brew it to the letter and yeah. send us a bottle. Yeah, that'd be nice. Or maybe bring a bottle to the next, not the West Coast first, because Patreon that'll be event. too long. The next Patreon event, which hopefully <laughs> won't be that long away. But yeah, um, we'll try and do one. Try and do one this summer. <clears throat> I think there was there was there was much talk, Johnny, of uh, a Belgian bus slash oh, Eurostar say. adventure. And we Bradley, had some you good... and I. Neither of us are good at admin. This is just—it's <laughs> never going to happen. No, no, we had we had some good ideas about this, right? Because I said, "Oh my god, public liability on that, guys." I don't know whether we, me and Johnny could handle it. And we had Patreon saying, "Oh no, no, no we could we could organise it," uh, and you know it would be uh, sort of them organising it and collating everyone together, and then obviously we are head of the spear. Uh, leading a sort of fun group of merry people, uh, so it might take some of the around the Pajotan land. Yeah, yeah, around the Pajotan land, uh, and hopefully no one will get forgotten in the Pajotan when we're hey. <laughs> falling over. I was trying. My my mind was whirring as well, trying to find a way to make a pun on forgotten, and you got there. All credit yeah. to you. Um, maybe you know somebody else is going to organise it. Sweet, I'm in. Count me in. Um, so yeah thank you everyone that came down last night it was a wonderful event and as you can tell Brad and I are actually doing all right you know I went to bed a little bit worried particularly with a newborn that this was going to be a very tough day um, and I'm (laughs) muddling through Um, should we talk about this week's video which has some west coast vibes to it as well yeah good timing eh on the video I thought Yeah. yeah Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so uh, we'd have loved to have had some uh, some track West Coast beer there, but we, we we couldn't get our asses in gear for it uh, last night. But yeah, the video went live. It was our interview with Track Brewing, which is a video I've wanted to make for a long time because I think they're brilliant, um, not necessarily underrated brewery. I think some people know them and rate them extremely highly, but I think they're just off the radar of some people. 
and everybody that has them on their radar is like, no, they're fucking amazing. Um, which is why um, lots of my favourite comments, um, both in the Patreon forum and in the comment section, has been like sort of people going, yeah, I went to see Cloudwater and it wasn't open yet. So I went to track and it was amazing, um, which, you know, must be doing them a, a world of good. But the beer is just, you know, it's, it's well up there. It's right up there with, with Cloudwater. Um, and obviously you've got Sonoma, which is one of the best car scales in the country. Yeah, man. I mean, it's it was an incredible place to go. Is it? Is it? They're a bit of a, a sleeper. Would it be fair to say they don't necessarily get the hype uh, as much as their their kind of um, estate uh, buddies, Cloudwater? But uh, my God, that tap room is incredible, and every, everything everything yeah. we drank there was absolute nectar and juice. It was on point. Yeah, yeah it was I think that their gold top stuff has started to get them some some buzz because why wouldn't uh, an overly sweet New England style beer? Um, but I mean, really, for me, their you know their Bagby collaboration, which mm. I drank it was about two months ago, and it's along with the Burnt Mill West Coast that I had get the gold is like my beer of the year. It's just absolutely stunning, um, and and yeah, so I think their West Coast stuff is incredible. I think their their Pilsners are, are pretty good. Um, I want to see them utilize the side pour a bit more. Give us a bit more head, a proper check pour. But the actual the actual beers were great, and I think yeah. I, I wanted to make this video because I wanted to put them on more people's radar. Um, um, you know, I have recently discovered we do actually now have the, the sort of the power to do that. Like when we posted about Baron um, uh, on Instagram a couple of months ago, and now I see Baron absolutely everywhere. And I'm not taking all the credit for that. The beer is amazing, and Jack's a lovely guy, and he's he's working hard. But it was great to see lots of people be like, "I've never heard of these guys. I'm going to put in an order." Um, so yeah, I really want to do that for breweries that are you know ethical and brilliant at what they do. The power, Johnny. Don't let it go to your head, the mate. Power. Don't let it go to your head. Uh, there's a lot of things in my head right now, mostly fog. <laughs> uh, well, what comments did you see and enjoy? Well, again, Johnny, I've been I've been kind of uh, picked up on for my style props. Uh, yeah. So not, not strictly beer comments here, but uh, I had a comment from KW. Brad has gone from feeler jacket to what looks like a Ralph Ren rugby style jumper. Lol. What a legend. Keep us guessing. Uh, Father <laughs> Earth, Brad's rugby sweater is on point again. Style icon in the making. Yes, brother. Um, what do you mean in the making? He's made. Oh, thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> um, and then Dave's Vid Seven said, "I want to see. Br- this is a great idea. I want to see Brad do a beer slash outfit pairing." That blew my mind when I when I read that. I was like, "That is so, a fucking great idea." How, how, how would how would that work? You'd be like, if you're wearing this, you should drink this. And it's like, don't drink an Imperial Stout while wearing a white T-shirt. Well, that's that's a certainly a, a practical uh, <laughs> thing. <laughs> approach, it's not very fashion of me. It's not very fashion. It's not very uh, emotional. I think I think fashion is an emotional thing, Johnny. Uh, I'm certainly Go on. very emotional about sort of colour and how I feel about what I... Where I guess the rugby top maybe looks a bit like a sign of danger because it's sort of orange and <laughs> it's almost like a bumblebee, orange and dark blue. Um, but orange is like one of my favourite colours, so I, I do wear quite a bit of orange. But um, yeah, I don't know. I would say maybe sort of beers that are kind of more angular. I'd maybe wear more aggressive colours or maybe sort of uh, colours that vibrate a bit more. Um, you know stuff that's more smooth and that's sort of. What do you mean by vibrate? Uh, so like buzzy colours that are opposite on the colour wheel on the colour spectrum. So mm-hmm. you could pair like red and bl- red and green are like opposite on the colour wheel. Um, so if you put those together, they instantly look crazy. Uh, the same with like. Uh, fuck, what is it like? Look, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a good example. So, colours that vibrate. So they they've been used throughout kind of uh, you know art history. I say throughout probably since the nineteen sixties uh, with psychedelic kind of stuff. So you get you get colours that are paired together that clash deliberately that do something to your your brain and your peepers, and they they look very vibrant. Um, hence vibration. Uh, you know, it's, it's a bit um it's a bit a bit emotionless again i apologize but there have been some studies done into why people order beers that they do at the bar 
and they yeah. did it using um, these uh, these cool glasses that you wear that track your eye movements. Mm. Um, and they've worked out that people read a bar from left to right. So if you like the layout of your taps, you'd want to be huh. far left to be seen right. first. Wow. Okay. But also the red is the most attractive color to drinkers. No fucking way. And I That's think crazy. that green came in second, which is really interesting if they're sort of opposites. But yeah, those are the two colors that should be on your tap badge. Red. Red. red I don't like yeah, I don't like red, but I mean obviously there are massive <laughs> the whole spectrum ma- of red you're like nah. <laughs> no, I just don't, I don't like I, yeah, pretty much don't like red. Um <laughs> I I wouldn't I don't think I own many items of red clothing. I'm trying to think. I don't think I've got any items. We've got a hoodie. Clothing. We've got merch that's red, Bradley. I yeah, don't yeah. I don't I don't own one of those. <laughs> oh. But uh yeah, I find red uh, too too much, but I mean obviously you got to look at like Camden Bud, uh, Bud Var, Bud Var, I think that might be red as well. Like Lone Star. Uh, I think the writing's right. The writing's right. Uh, yeah. uh, what's the Jamaican beer? Um, terrible red Stripe. Beer. Red Stripe. There's fucking loads of them that are giant, yeah. giant brands that are all red. So it does. Yeah. It has got that massive association with beer historically, hasn't it? Red. Hmm. Bass, I think Bass was red as well. That's Bass a red triangle. Red. The first didn't it? ever trademarked thing was red. Yeah, Fuller's first ever trademark thing. What was Bass? The Bass Triangle trademark. First the Bass ever. Triangle was the first ever yeah brand trademark. Yeah, get out of town. Really? I before... won't. I won't get out of town. Hang on, what before like Coca Cola and stuff? What yeah, are we talking... wait, I mean Bass is a much older brand than Coca Cola. How old is Bass? Now I'm now I'm going to go down a Bass wormhole. Or a bass fit, a bass Sega bass. Are we going to be googling hole. live on Friday five pm again? Yeah, no. We're, I mean, I'm I'm certainly not. I'm too hungover for that. Yeah, okay, seventeen seventy seven bass was founded. How, what? Hang on. What year was it? You cut out then for a second. Seventeen seventy seven. Wow, that's like. So America wasn't was America founded by then? It, it was yeah. new if it wasn't. It's pretty new. Sorry, yeah, uh, independent new. America wasn't oh, it seventeen right, yeah, seventy. Yeah. Might have been seventeen seventy eight. I don't know. We're showing our we're showing our lack of knowledge here. Um, so yeah, it's Coca-Cola's a year. Coca Cola's eighteen eighty. Okay. Eighteen eighty eight. Coca Cola. So a hundred years, hundred and ten years later. I th- I thought Coca Cola was first made as a treatment for Civil War veterans to deal with pain. I might have totally invented that. Y- yeah, um, the American Civil War. Uh, when was the American Civil War? See, th- we are. This is not a history podcast. I was right about the American Independence. That's seventeen seventy six. Yeah. American. Well, I tell you what. I'll just I'll just go to the Coca Cola website and no, it won't say it tell on there. The history. I don't. I don't think it will say it on there. But Sorry, I, when I my... say the Coca Cola website, I mean Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in my head, that was that was kind of the thing that it was to do with. It, it sort of rose to popularity because there were. Well, who doesn't like a bit of cocaine in there? Sugar water. Dude, dude this is amazing. <laughs> Confederate Colonel John Pemberton, yes, wounded yeah. in the American Civil War and addicted to morphine, yeah. had a medical degree and began a quest to find a substitute for the problematic drug. There you go. Right. So you, you're pretty much on the money. It wasn't like yeah, designed yeah. during, I think it was after the war, to help the people that got addicted to morphine. Bloody hell. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is quite amazing. Um Right? I mean, that's an incredible founding of a business story. <laughs> yeah, I'm addicted to... I mean, you've got to credit, you know, drug addicts are not necessarily yeah. known for... Uh... That motivated. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've got a motivation, obviously. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, that is a remarkable thing to do, to be like, I need to get off morphine, so I'm going to use my medical degree to invent uh, an alternative. And he called Co- it Pemberton's French Wine Coca, was the yeah, original it got, name. It... And he, I think he died penniless as well. He didn't, he sold it or he died of something, consumption or something crazy. And then it went, the next people made a load of money. It happened. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, man, I, I love all these crazy stories. Like, it's like um, the McDonald's story as well. That that was, uh, I think that was a, a was it the, a pair of brothers or something that had a McDonald's? And then this sort of businessman went to them. Well, there's a film about it, isn't there? Michael Keaton film called The Founder. He went to them uh-huh. and basically kind of like half swindled them out of uh, McDonald's as a brand. 
and he 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 saw what they were doing in in sort of making stuff burgers quite quick, and then he 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 kind of got them to sign some perpetual deal where he owned like the name or whatever, and they it stopped them from doing their own expansion, uh, so they could keep their original McDonald's. But he invented this but quick owned, serve like, the system. Business. Yeah, he totally yeah. fucked him, man. This is like a business genius slash um, evil genius uh, yeah. thing. But yeah, amazing that these well, we, brands we... <laughs> are, are still kind of kicking about and still such a big impact on the culture of our times. Uh, and they've got such strange sort of foundings, both in America as well. You know, like it's it's uh, yeah, west the ha- the land of West Coast. Trying to rein it back in, Johnny. We've gone so. I know. <laughs> I was just thinking we, we we nearly managed to be a podcast for a, uh, be a podcast for a full podcast, but we didn't quite manage it. Yeah. I've now fallen down a rabbit hole. I'm looking at because if you go to the Coca Cola Wikipedia page, yeah. it says not to be confused. At the very top, it says not to be confused with Coca Cola, and Coca Cola uh, is mm. a Bolivian energy drink with coca as its extract base. Okay, so when are we going to Bolivia, Johnny? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Coca Cola, so it's Coca-Cola. got Coca and it has what in it? Sorry, Coca. it has co- coca leaves, so like unrefined cocaine, essentially, like straight up coca leaves or whatever that yeah. haven't been processed or well, maybe not processed. It's literally cocaine. cocaine in this thing. Yeah, fuck, man, Bolivia, and it's These called guys... Coca Cola. I just can't believe that. Co- How are they Coca-Cola allowed to do that? Yeah. yeah, maybe it's really yeah. old as well. Then maybe it has a cultural sort of thing. Maybe there is no history on Wikipedia of Coca Cola. Interesting. Maybe they're just such outlaws. They're like, "Fuck you, Coca Cola Corporation. We're just gonna make our druggy, uh, sugary water, and to hell with you. Come and get us if you're brave enough." Do you, do you know? I mean, it could also be. So it's apparently Cola. So it's C O L L A is a part of Bolivia. So maybe there's some kind of protection because it's the name okay. of a place. I like so it. It could be pretty clever. Yeah. Could be some yeah. sort of, uh, yeah, yeah. All right, let's swing it back, Johnny. What are your yeah, comments? Anyway. What are your comments about this week's <laughs> well, video? Well, I sort of talked, talked about mine. The, the, the only one I want to talk about, so we had the people that were sort of saying, yeah, I've, I've discovered them by going to Cloudwater, which is great. But the one I wanted to bring up is, uh, okay, here we go. Zevrar. Yes. We'll call him Zed or her Zed. Um, <laughs> writes with full stops between each word, don't put your tap in the glass filthy people oh um which is a bit much zed but um this is um wrong this is an old cliche based on the idea that people didn't look after their taps and let's be honest probably a couple of decades ago they didn't look after their taps but if you're in a good bar the taps will be spotless the taps will also be wet with the previous pint if the if they're flowing nicely and pouring with the nozzle in it um is actually preferable in many ways because it means that you can pour the head then put the tap underneath the head and reduce any oxidization make it so that you don't end up with a glass full of head because it will um obviously it's not falling and then hitting at greater speed which forces the carbon dioxide out of uh, solution so you know if your taps are clean do it you should be yes. doing it so like um, so- my ad- my advice zavora r is if you are a filthy person don't put your tap in the glass but if yeah. you are, are running a, 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 a you know a great establishment that cleans like everything like track D, then definitely do put your tap in the glass because you're going to get a non oxygen ridden pint with a great head on it and it's going to taste exactly. beautiful. Yeah, exactly. So it's yeah. If you trust the place, let them put the let them dip the dip the taps in. If you don't. Uh, I don't know, do do what Zed did here and um, be really aggressive in the comment section. Um, so yeah, that, that was the only one I picked out. Everyone else is just, I mean, it is just full of loads of love for track, essentially. Um, yeah. And lots of people saying I hadn't heard of them, so we're going to give them a go. So that's great. Um, oh. And thanks so much to the track, guys. We should be doing, we should be doing a live show with them in the coming months. We're trying to organize that, but we're struggling to find a date that we're all free. Um so we will get back to you on that, but there should be a tasting where you can try a track for the first time and hopefully speak to Sam, the founder, as well. Hopefully he'll be able to be there. Beautiful, beautiful. I, I just wanted, I wanted to say as well, I, I thought, I think it's in the running for the most beautiful brewery slash tap room in the UK, uh, mm. along with Daya, which I also think is absolutely sexy and beautiful uh, as, a, as a destination 
place, but I haven't been to Flock yet. Flock looks pretty cool in Canterbury. I might pop there this weekend. I'm going to see how I get on. Do it, man. I also I found out I didn't know this recently, but um, when I was up at Duration last week, um, Pressure Drop were doing a collaboration, and, and Sienna from Pressure Drop, her partner, uh, was the head brewer at uh, Howling Hops, and now yes. is at Flock. No way. He's now head brewer at Flock. Oh shit! Oh, she told me that ages ago. My brain, <laughs> mate. I am. I am. My. I'm so hungover. Maybe I'm so hungover, Johnny, and I, I can't even realise it because West Coast is incredible. And it's the best. West is the best. You don't West get such a bad hangover, but it makes you forget everything important. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure that's true. <laughs> I think I, th- I don't know what's happened here. I th- we've we've come upon a West Coast miracle oh. um, that we've both woken up able to do a podcast. Beautiful. Um, right. Anyway, that's all we have time for this week. Um, we uh, we don't know. <laughs> we're, we're in. We've got a lot on. Um, that's yeah. going to be my excuse. But we don't know what next week's video is. It might be the Omnipoyo one. It might be. Um, an Ants, Batch and Hob Day video. It might be something entirely different, but we will see you on Wednesday for something. And then, of course, on Friday again for Friday, 5 p.m. But yeah, thank you to all of our patrons who came down. Uh, the final thing to say is, and we put this in our Patreon forum, uh, this week, Brad and I paid ourselves our first proper wage from the Craft Beer channel. So we just want to thank uh, absolutely everybody who's ever bought some merch, watched the adverts on our videos, uh, supported our Patreon or any of the companies out there listening that have sponsored us or helped us along the way to say, you know, just want to say thank you so much because you've, you've kept the channel alive, you've turned it into what it is and you've, you've now uh, made, made a living for me and Bradley. So uh, bless you uh, and thank you. The Bubble and Friday 5pm podcasts are brought to you by the nerds behind YouTube's Craft Beer channel. You can watch over 400 mini documentaries at youtube.com slash the craft beer channel. And if you love what we do, support us via Patreon and get access to merchandise and our amazing Discord forum, a positive and welcoming space for everyone who loves beer, food and homebrewing. Love and beer. Love and beer.